Hey, it's Joseph here. A skybox is an image that works as a background as well as the surroundings of your model. By default, Enscape offers several background options and they are called Horizon Presets, which is found in Enscape Settings and Atmosphere, Horizon Presets, and then you can click on Clear, and forest, as well as construction site, town, urban, white cubes, and white ground. But sometimes these may not be exactly what you're looking for. And because Enscape offers many different images to be used as skyboxes, we can be quite creative sourcing one of our own. So let me share some of those methods that I know after the user. In Enscape, it is definitely not required to have fancy HDRIs to be used as your backgrounds. You can have everything from HDR, BMP, JPEG, PNG, TIFF, if I remember correctly, TGA file as well. What is TGA? I'm actually not even sure. But Enscape supports that too, which is all set on Enscape's own website. So you can just follow the link in the description. So basically what I'm trying to tell you is that as long as you have some sort of 360 degree panoramic image in one to two ratio or three to four ratio for cross skybox types, then you'll be able to use it. And to load one of the skybox image, you can find the Enscape settings, which is an icon here. And in the atmosphere tab, load skybox from file and just click on this icon here and you'll be able to select any of the images you own. So I have downloaded these images from Enscape's website for free, which I'll leave the link in the description for you to follow. And once you're in there, you can just scroll down to HDRI skybox collection and you'll be able to download by clicking this here. And once you do so, I'm just gonna use this as an example. If you open that and go to Enscape, you should be able to see what's been applied as your model background. So let me move myself back on the ground. Synchronize view here and perhaps back out a little bit. So I should still be able to change a few things to find the suitable position of your background. So I can just drag on this rotation bar here to rotate your background, as well as change the brightness of the background. I'm gonna double click to just position it as a default. And this will snap back to 2000 lux as it is most suitable for daylight scenes. And this slider would also be very useful when working with the night skyboxes that aren't in HDR formats. And you can simply lower the brightness value for much more realistic night scenes. And I can also use the brightest point as a sun direction. And you can notice that shadow follows as you rotate things around. It just uses as a sun direction when you check on this. And you can also increase the fog amount if you want to and double click to just back into default or sun amount if I wanna decrease or increase and I can do that as well. And if you notice any weird behavior when adjusting this slide bar, so for example, if I'm increasing this, it is actually getting darker here. It is due to the auto exposure setting under general tab. If you uncheck this and go back and you will see expected behavior of the sun brightness, and it may apply the same for brightness under the skybox setting as well. So with those functions aside, let's look at our own ways to source the skyboxes. So method number one, which is sort of the traditional way, you can go out somewhere and take series of pictures and stitch them either manually or automatically. I personally have tried this method, however, I wasn't really so successful. Covering entire 360 degrees as well as meeting on either end seamlessly was proving to be somewhat very difficult. So quickly moving on to method number two, which is using a smartphone app. There are many different apps for either Android or iPhones that captures 360 degree panorama, whether it be the paid or free apps. The one that I use personally is the one that's made by Google, which is a Google Street View. So you can go to Play Store and type in Google Street View. And then you can install that 
Once it is installed, you can launch the app, pressing this button here in camera. So once the processing is finished, you can go to the photo and tap it and you should be able to see the image and you can just kind of scroll around as well as just tap on this button right here and you should be able to just kind of move your phone to register the movement and be able to look around, which is very cool. And then you can find that image saved on your phone and export that out to your computer and you should be able to view. And then I can download that. And once I am opening up the settings, I can go to atmosphere and find the file that I just downloaded. And I should be able to find the exact spot that I want. And then I should be good to go. So method number three, which is using a dedicated camera. There are many different type of 360 degree panorama capturing cameras that are out there and simple Google search will result something like this. And there are a lot of options to choose from. And some of these cameras can be less laborious trying to capture the panorama because it's a simple of button click rather than you going around taking the picture like the smartphone app, but it would often cost somewhere upwards of $100. And if you can invest that sort of money, then you can also consider flying your camera up with a drone and be able to just capture 360 degree of the area that you're interested in. However, if you cannot access the area that you're interested in or you simply don't have that sort of area around you, then you can go for the next method, which is method number four, downloading. There may be some fees involved if you're trying to download something off of online, but there are also free ones out there which are on Enscape website as I have mentioned as well as some other third-party websites such as this one here is called hdrlabs.com and the next one is openfootage.net which is a website that I had mentioned last time on my video and I'll leave both of the links in the description for you to follow the next one up is method number five also is an option that doesn't require to go outside which is an option where you find your location on Google Street View view and download the panorama from there. My previous video will have sort of a detailed guide on this so you can just click on this to follow that video then it will be a very effective way of creating your own background from Google Street Views. And my personal favorite which is method number six. This one uses Enscape's own panorama render as your background. In order to do this you're gonna have to have some sort of site model of your own and I have save position here and I can just start the Enscape. There you go. And I can come out and then press this take panorama button. And once I press that, Enscape will go ahead and create the panorama. And then I can click on my panoramas. You can click on the render that you have made and then press on these three dots, do more and save panorama to file to the location that you desire to save. And you can go back to your original file. Again, settings, atmosphere, and then click on this button and then find that background file open so you can rotate and find somewhere that is suitable for your specific model and there you go. So hopefully these methods have covered some of the useful ways to create the sky boxes for Enscape and how do you create your own sky boxes and please let me know your preferred method by leaving a comment down below. I would love to know if there is any other creative ways to gather your own sky boxes. If you have enjoyed this content please like the video and subscribe to the channel if you want to continue watching this type of videos and I'll see you next time. Bye.